Hey everyone and welcome to Football Therapist for the second episode of this series and the methodology of Dynamo's Grabs Academy. So if you haven't seen the first episode yet, I advise you to do, to do so before watching this one. Today we'll continue to talk about football uh, scientifically, especially since the failure of such talented players as Lilovic can be explained by, precisely by an, by an understanding of the game and the evolution of the methodology of the Creation Club's uh, Academy, which is actually regularly updated, notably because of this type of failure. Then how can we explain that such a good academy didn't allow Elena Lilovic, uh, a player who had one of the best raw talents in the world, to, imp to impose himself uh, at the highest level? As with Ante Koric, um, for, uh, former academy di director um, Romeo Jocak explains that it is first of all a question of mentality. An aspect that has come to join Thicknik uh, as the main criteria for recruiting uh, young players at Dynamo, which now precisely prevents uh, the youngsters' parents from attending their child's training sessions so that the latter can play for himself and not for his parents. But Romeo Jotak also considers uh, himself responsible for Elena Lilovic's failure at, at the highest level, as the, the former Barca and AC Milan player still had a low level of game intelligence uh, when he joined Dinamo Zagreb's first team. The reason? He hadn't been corrected enough during his years uh, at the academy, uh, even though he always, he always ended up dribbling past all his teammates in, in training. At a young age, he was even more impressive than Luka Modric, apparently. Why should he have been corrected then? Uh, simply because he often made bad decisions. But because he eventually got away with it due to his technical quality, coaches didn't tend to correct him. An example, there's a passing option to go directly to the opponent's goal, but Alilovic prefers to keep the ball and dribble past three players before scoring. In the end, there is a goal, but the team could have scored earlier and with less risk. Before leaving Croatia, Lilovic had in fact never experienced any real difficulties on the pitch because even if he made bad, de bad de decisions, his magnificent left foot could compensate for them afterwards. So in addition to these corrections that, that would have been necessary, Romeo Jozza now knows that he should also have been asked to, to use his right foot more often. The reason? Only a few players out of a out of thousands managed to survive at the highest level by using on average their strong foot uh, 9 times out of 10, like Lilovic does. The, the best examples being Robin, uh, Messi, Di Maria, uh, Bale, Neymar. Using almost only one foot was in the, enough for Lilovic, but only up to a certain level, because unfortunately for him it seems impossible to significantly change uh, such habits uh, once in the professional world. That is why Dynamo's Grab has since um, updated its me methodology, which happens every four or five years anyway, to, to avoid a second similar situation. Thus, coaches mu must ensure that the weak foot is used, in, used in, in situations where the game demands it, and this from a young age by stopping training matches when, when necessary. So it's not just about making the right decision, it's about choosing the right foot and the right skill to execute it. And for this to be successful, the technique must be trained from, from an early age and, and initially in, in isolation, as explained in, in my first video on, on the topic. Even if the fact that Croatians tend to start playing football at a very young age um, um, can can explain this this early recruitment by by Dynamo. It might also be uh, an intent an intention not to let these youngsters develop bad habits that that are that are difficult to change afterwards. This approach is reminiscent of the Cur Curver method, in, inspired by that of the late Dutch coach uh, Will Curver, where ball mastery is at the base of the pyramid. It's therefore no coincidence that Dynamo's grab regularly invites the, the coaches of the Curver Coaching Group to the shadows of the Maximir Stadium 
uh, to be able to expand their uh, range of exercises and drills to improve uh, the technique the technique of, of the young players. Here is a diagram of Dynamo's Grabs development program where we can see its different uh, phases, notably with the idea that ideally we should first work on technique before uh, decision making, making the, the learning of skills being fundamental until the age of 14, uh, 15. In scientific, in scientific language, this is called the formation of motor programs. And even if the image of an exercise to train bicycle kicks with a big mat that I, that I, inc that I included in my first video might come to your mind now, these modern learning processes are not limited to ball mastery, since running technique is also worked on in this first in this first uh, phase. Because the sooner you learn a movement, the sooner it can be applied correctly in the game. And as for tactics, they are only taught taught in in depth from the age of 13. Because before that, the coach's requirements are mainly general on the on the topic. Regardless of the score, the academy teams must run the ball and build from the back. And, but this, this doesn't prevent coaches from correcting the, their players' decision before that age, without forgetting that players can, can learn by playing in training, in training, even from a very young age. The many 2v, 2v1, 2v2, 3v2 and 3v3, and 3v3 situations worked on regularly in the first in, in, in the early categories can themselves be tactical lessons, whether in terms of position and space occupation or in terms of marking, losing your marker or pinning an opponent. So no matter which age group Lena Lilovic skipped to find himself in the first team at 16, his technical and tactical ed education was not complete because it, it should have lasted about four years longer in, in the academy. It's therefore surely better to ensure that uh, players who make the jump to, to the next category uh, earlier than, than expected do not suffer from a lack of technical knowledge and skills. That's it for me. Uh, feel free to subscribe to, to my channel to make sure you don't miss similar content. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop me a like, tell me in the comments and, and share the video with another football nerd. It would really help me a lot. More than you think. Bye-bye.